Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being the show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Superman and Lois. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, conversations kind of went the way I thought they would between Tal and Clark about the whole, like, Ryle. All that you've done for these humans, and they lock you up in here with me. Despite all that I've done, where did I end up? I ended up in this cell with you, brother. So it's kind of like, yeah, what was the point? Yeah, I might have been the bad guy, but what does that make you? And it's because Anderson, apparently he talked to his superior and got the okay, the green light. Now, whether how much... I'm not I'm not 100% sure if that is the truth of it all. I'm assuming it is. He says he got the green light. I, I think it's just a thing of... Because later on, everyone backs down. But I think that's because Sam started raising enough hell that Anderson's superior, superior heard about that. And it's like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 what? They've got Superman locked up? No, 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 no. Because the whole point was like, right, he's supposed to be this country's greatest asset. And it's like, cool, we've got one of the most powerful beings on the planet. we got one of the most powerful beings on the planet. I locked up, and we're just, oh, no, 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 we, we need him on our side, so jumping around a little bit, I do love that when it's all said and done, they cave in, and just even him being like, oh, yeah, because they're, they're asking for your forgiveness, they're, they're lapsed in judgment, and it's like, oh, we're putting that all on Anderson, that was his choice, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, we lost ourselves for him, it's like, no, 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 we, we, we want to appease you, Superman, and it's just like, it sucks that, once again, trust in everything, despite everything, Clark shouldn't have to work so hard to gain their trust. He should, he should, he should, um, they should work so hard to, to gain his. But Clark's not going to look at it that way because he knows right from wrong and he knows what he has to do. And it's like, right, he made his choice. He can't let the, the way a few people have reacted dictate the way how he treats the rest of humanity. It's like, right, I have my responsibility. I will be this this world's protector, not just this country. I will protect everyone. I will protect my family. That's that's all there is to it. So he's not going to get too caught up in it. Me being petty the way I am, I'm like, no, no, no. I, I want some forgiveness. But you know, so you being like, no, no, I want a formal apology. But their form of a formal apology is like, don't worry. We're hunting Anderson down for all the legal stuff he did. I mean, come on. He went in there like threatened, like, but also that kind of, that's kind of like that side of like, uh, you're like, eh, it's not too, you know, it's like, oh, him just storming in there, torturing someone. It's like, regardless of the circumstances, it's still kind of like, yeah, what about, you know, but the sad thing is, it's like, eh, it's not, eh. this country's kind of done that from time to time, just made people kind of disappear and torture them. So it's not like, it's not like it's like out there, but it's still kind of like, yeah, I'm sure you're going to want to cover that up. Regardless of who it was, you're still torturing someone. Um... You weren't listening to Superman. Superman told you to look in the alley, but he was like, no, 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 no. I want to find the creature that killed my men. It's like, no, is it because you're trying to get revenge for their families and stuff like that? Maybe there's some part of it, but I can't help but also feel like, no, you're just a selfish prick who got his pride broken because his superior was like, get this figured out or you lose everything. I will strip you of your entire position and everything. So it's like... He's under, he was under pressure, so it's, it doesn't justify, but I'm just, it's just, I don't, I don't look at you as, like, this some altruistic, like, I'm getting revenge for my men that died. It's like, like I said, I think there's a part of it, but to me, it just gets overshadowed by your own ego, because you refuse to have, like, you want, it's like you want Superman to cow down to you, to bow down to you, it's like, no, 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 it's almost like, it's because it wasn't the equal partnership, it's like, but that's not how this works, once again, Sam had the advantage of being family, so Clark, <clears throat> there was a lot of leeway both ways, but even then, even being family, it made them probably bump heads even more, but probably definitely not to the extent of Anderson and um, Clark, but still, which once again, I just find funny, because it's like, right, they're, they're who they were to each other in Teen Wolf, and now here they are. Like, they bumped, they kind of agreed in some regards, but they also bumped heads in Teen Wolf as well. So it's just, it's funny that that dynamic even exists in this as well. It's, it's very interesting how that plays out like that. But, um, I do love the whole situation of like, he led them to his fortress of solitude. And I, I love Tall being like, yeah, but what are they going to do when they come back? They were going to kill me, and you, what are you going to do? Just let that happen? It's just kind of like, okay. 
And so they put on their little performance and they ultimately get out of there. Uh, because especially because they found uh, Bizarro's mask at uh, or helmet or whatever at uh, the Fortress of Solid because he went there to take it off. Like Clark had no Clark had no connection to him in, in that regard. But what did Anderson say? Like, oh my God, they're working together because he just assumes the worst in Superman. Like he can't trust him or whatever. The man who's put in time for this country, this world, yeah, you can't trust him. He uh, helped lock up his own brother last. Uh, no, 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 can't can't trust him. You know, uh, wasn't something else dealing with that recently? The whole thing of like, right, you did put your own brother away, but that kind of doesn't mean anything. Well, I'm thinking a little bit of Endgame, uh, not in, not Avengers Endgame, the show The Endgame. I, I need to specify that for now on. Where like uh, Val. Like, she's a main character, well, one of the main characters, and she ended up uh, arresting her own husband, but it doesn't matter. It's still, even though she took him down, she still has to deal with the ramification. People are like, oh, your husband's a dirty cop. Like, what does that say about you? It's like, I took him down and admit nothing? It's kind of the same thing of, like, I'm not getting any leeway. I saved the world for my brother, my own people, and that that doesn't say anything to you, you know? Especially considering, like, Anderson was like, oh, I'm such a big fan, I love you, I know all there is to know about you, Superman, blah, 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 you know? So, Anderson to go so hard in the paint like he did, uh, not only did he s take some uh, XK that was confiscated, I guess by pumping multiple ones, you, because, once again, we've seen bits and displays of, like, right, it, most people, it seems like it gives them one power at a time, but I guess maybe if you inhale enough, it gives you more like, as long as you don't let it run out of, like, if it runs out of your system and you re-up, that's one thing. But it's like, Jonathan had, um, was getting, like, the heat vision thing going on. But that's also tied to, like, his powers have always been enhanced, like, um, ocular stuff. But then there's also, um, he got superhuman strength to some extent. So, and we see that with Anderson in this, too. So, I guess if you inhale enough, you'll get, you know, I don't know, like, I guess it just depends on your DNA and stuff like that. They haven't really gone into it too much, but the understanding before always seemed like you get one ability. Very much like the, um, once again, Meteor Freak storyline in Superman, I mean, in, in Smallville, where it's just like, yeah, most people who got abilities from the Kryptonite just got one ability. Like, you got something tied to it, that's all. So, I just think that's fascinating. But, um... Also, I love Tall being like, she, cause um, his their mom was like, oh, I heard that you uh, fought together. It's like, yes, mother, uh, you should have seen it. Two brothers fighting against the humans that oppressed them. You would have been so proud. It was glorious, mother. And I was like, gosh. Oh, and you just tell like Clark's just like, uh, I just love Tall. Like, that's the thing. He's such a scumbag, but the actor who plays him, oh, he he oozes charm. So like in moments like that, I'm like, ah. Oh, you tell your your genocidal like terraforming douchebag, but God damn it, I love you in this moment. It just it it, it played so nicely. Interestingly enough, uh, talking to Bizarro, it's like cool. He's like right in my world, uh, we were enemies, but we were the closest of brothers. And he's like, yeah, what changed? You know, greed, power. Your wife tried to kill me, like wife. And I'm like, well, we saw the picture of the Kents, like, and it was like. Jonathan and Lois were crossed out. I'm pretty sure that was Clark. Not unless that's trying to hint to the fact that it wasn't that actually Morgan El Tall and Lois got together in that condom. Not unless that was what that was suggesting. I don't know. Um, I mean, we saw in that universe um, Lana was one of the uh, Superman of America. So you're like, okay, what's going on in that regard? I mean, I want like who was his wife? I was like, for a second, I was like. Like I said, I I'm sure it was Clark's, uh, but the but the face, yeah, it was it was Clark's face you saw. I was about to say like not unless it was um Morgan Anderson, not unless I'm remembering it that wrong. If I am misremembering that wrong, do correct me in the comments down below. But I'm like, yeah, like who was his wife then, huh? And the fact is, we never got to find out. It must be quite the interesting mystery. I was like, not unless it ended up being Allie or something. Not be interesting if that ended up being the case, but. He's like, yeah, your wife tried to kill me. And he's like, no, no, I need to at least know her name. But sadly, he didn't get that chance because uh, Anderson showed up using some kryptonite to weaken everybody. I even love he tried to use it against, um, tried to use it against, uh, 
Bizarro, but it didn't work. And he'd been like, what? Because they're opposite. What hurts Clark isn't... At first, I was almost wondering, I'm like, wouldn't that kryptonite actually make him stronger? Because that's what kryptonite does. It weakens kryptonians in this world. I'd assume it makes them stronger in the other world. So, just like the yellow sun actually weakens him, whereas it makes kryptonians from this world get stronger. So, I, I, I think that's fascinating. I love the fact is that... Um, that Tall was, you know, uh, willing to sacrifice himself despite everything. It's like, yeah, because through it all, it's still like our our differences of opinions, our, our positions on things. You are still my brother. So he defended him. Um, and Bizarro and uh, Anderson went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I was like, this is going to end bad. Because I kept expecting like this to be like a man of still thing of like, I was expecting at one point... Uh, Tall was going to get behind Anderson and snap his neck. I thought we were going to get something like that. And in another way around, we got Anderson killing Bizarro. I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting you to die. But also, I think it also it plays into the story because it's like, right, he is the only one that has all the answers about Ali and just all... Once again, we know next to nothing about this Bizarro world. And I think eventually what Ali's going to end up doing is going to basically end up fusing both worlds together. And that's going to call like, it's going to basically be two dimensions collapsing upon each other. They were apparently a, a single dimension at one point in time, but dimensions collapsing upon each other is really not a good thing, especially because like so much is going to get, so many lines are going to get blurred and that's going to probably cause some like dimensional, like cosmic, um, catastrophe on a massive level and at the end of the day it's all going to be Anderson's fault because he's such a proud douchebag who believes that Superman ruined his life and career it's like mm, you shot yourself in the foot here if you only listened you listened you douchebag but you couldn't you couldn't help yourself so and ended up killing the only key to all this in fact he ends up helping Allie by giving her a pendant at the end I'm like Superman told you he was dating but it's like oh I'm not going to listen to him it's like yeah you know, he's like, because it's the thing of like, I, I'm, I'm not the bad guy here. He is, you know, so if he thinks I don't trust Superman anymore and if he thinks Allie's the bad guy, she must be the good guy because obviously I'm being labeled a bad guy when actually I'm just a good all-American soldier. I'm a good guy, you know, which isn't like some like me taking some shot at American soldiers or anything like that. It's just this particular douchebag. It's just like his pride got the best of him because he believes himself to be right so much that he couldn't just give Superman the leeway. It's like, if you had listened to him, maybe things wouldn't have turned out the way they did with, like, you know, your other Superman of America. You wouldn't be down to the one, but, you know. Obviously, Clark had no choice. He had to choose between helping out Bizarro or helping out his own brother, so flying him out towards the sun so that he can feel the sun's radiation of, you know, uh, actually heal, but still ended up having to put his brother back in the cell. It's like, right, you, I, I couldn't let you just go free. It's like, yeah, but he's like, I do appreciate, like, if you weren't there, I would have died. And he's like, ah, that's, you know, what else would I breathe there? Like, you know, that's what a brothers are for. And I love that he's like, do tell your son, though, that I am sorry. I think he has had a change of heart. That he isn't the same man. I guess when you had everything kind of taken from you, like, it kind of uh, kind of makes you see things in a different light, and, and he's like, I'm, I'm sorry, and Clark was like, thank you, but maybe one day you'll be able to get the chance to tell him yourself, because Clark is now, I think, seeing a different light, and his brother is like, right, like, I think one day there's, there is some good in you, you can change, I've, I've seen it myself, so... It's definitely going to be interesting to see how, like, going forward, whether they really tackle this, because it's it's definitely put a strain on the the U.S.'s relationship with Superman. So they're trying to appease him, be like, "Oh, everything's good, everything's copacetic, like it's all good, we're good, we're Gucci." But it's like, eh, I, I, I'm if I was Clark, I'd have a bit of a chip on my shoulder. But there's just so many other things at play here. He's got to do. He's just happy to be home with his family. That is like, I can't get too caught up in that. Which family circumstances are complicated too, because. Jonathan trying to get rid of the drugs that uh, Candace bought because she bought like a shit ton, mainly because she was trying to get some for Jonathan, like so he wouldn't he'd have a longer supply. It just I don't know, it feels a little enablish, not enablish. It definitely is very enabling. The fact that she's like, oh no, you need this, like to go up against Timmy. Now you're in this position, you need this to keep going. And but he's like, no, I don't want to. It's like a lot of. I mean, obviously, there's the peer pressure element of it, but there's also the element of, you are taking, I even love later on, because, like, Lana found out about everything, and she's like, you're not, and she's like, what, taking, like, um, 
alien space dust? No, I'm not that stupid. It's like, it's kind of crazy to think about it, but it's like, obviously it's a giant metaphor for drugs anyway, because, you know, I mean, I guess the timing's interesting too, because I've never seen Euphoria, but what you, what I know of Euphoria is what generally people who've never seen Euphoria probably knows about, like, all the sex, the drugs, and just like, and just like, and the conversation coming up again and again of like, that's what it's like being a teenager. I mean, it's like, things weren't that wild. I mean, I knew people, like, nothing hardcore like that. But, you know, because people, I think a lot of people would just assume, like, oh, that's a movie, TV, hyperbolization. The way people talk about it, it's like, no, like, that's that's how kids roll this day. And it's like, that, kids are rolling, like, full-grown adults on this? Like, that's wild. So, probably, like, you know. But regardless, my point was like, Jonathan ended up getting into a lot of trouble and he won't sell out Candace because it's like, well, not only is that his girlfriend, there's that element, but it's also because no one knows it's her. Um, no one knows that's his supplier. But the thing is, it's also the thing of he doesn't want to ruin her life because if it falls back on her, it's going to fall back on her family and they're struggling. And he is trying to do the right thing in his own regard. And maybe if he had confided in his family, like, no, we can't tell Candace's family they need this, but it's like, but at the end of the day, he's probably thinking, like, no, like, Lois and Clark are going to listen to, like, are going to, like, take care of their family first and foremost. Their well-being comes first and foremost, and, you know, but, you know, he, if he had given his parents a chance, maybe they could have found out a different solution. Candace is texting him later on, but like, Yo, are you okay? I'm, I'm like, I thought you were only going to get into a little bit of trouble. Obviously, Jordan has his issues with uh, Jonathan, too, this whole secret of everything. Because Jonathan's kind of feeling the pressure of it all. Because it's like, right, he's potentially going to get expelled. They've got to try and talk. You know, it's like, right, uh, you need to... Because even later on, Clark comes in so disappointed in him. His mom's disappointed in him. Uh, she's disappointed in Jordan for knowing and not saying anything. Because she doesn't know what to believe. Because she's like, did you... Were you selling it? He's like, I wasn't selling it, Mom. Then who was it? He's like, I'm sorry. He's like, wait, you were taking it too? He's like, yeah, I just wanted an edge, you know? And actually talking to Lana actually got her to like, because Lana said like, right, when, uh, I went out, when I wanted Sarah to talk about her suicide attempt, it was more so for my sake. Um, your kids, some kids sometimes just want to have someone who will listen to them so they just don't feel so like, let them realize that they're not alone. And Sarah's kind of going that a little bit this episode uh, when she ends up talking to Audrey. We'll get to that a little bit later on. And then obviously Jonathan's kind of going through that because he's he's never seen his mom's so disappointed in him. He feels like he's letting everyone down. And it's understandable. It is the thing of, once again, because him and Lois are the same. It's like, right, we have no powers. We're like the ordinary people in a uh, super ordinary family. But it's also like an extraordinary family is what I'm trying to, I meant to say. But it's like, yeah, but even being the normal people amongst that is kind of extraordinary in its own regard. But it's like, right, but everyone in the family is great about something. Dad's literally Superman. Jordan's got powers. Mom's one of the greatest reporters in the world. Like, she's world-renowned. Um, but me, like, who am I? Like, even when it comes to... Football was supposed to be his thing, but coming to Smallville, like, that's fallen behind because now it's Jordan's thing, and he just, like, it's not a position he's used to being in anymore. And, to be, you, and he needed a leg up. Not just in Timmy, but just in every aspect of life. He wanted to feel special again. He wanted to be some. He wanted to be something great. And in the process, he ended up doing something stupid. So his dad's like, you're going to apologize to your principal, the coach. Me and your mom are going to try and figure something out about how you can finish high school, whether it's just like in another town, online, or something. Like, the fact is that you and I are going to have a conversation going forward about stuff that I believe that you already knew. I thought you had a good head on your shoulders, but apparently not. This is the stuff like, did anything me and your mom ever say to you go in one ear and then out the other? Like getting yelled at by his dad. It's never like going parenting mode like that, you know? And Jonathan kind of crying at him because it is the thing. It's the pressure of just like, God, like, what have I, like, what am I doing? What have I done? Like, and I'm curious, is Candace going to say anything in the long run? Like, maybe, maybe not. Because it is still the thing of, like, if she said anything, she would get in way more trouble because uh, it would just have a massive effect on her family. But the problem is, like, I don't know. I think, not trying to justify it, but I understand where Jordan's, uh, Jonathan's coming from. But the question is, like, was it the right choice to make? I don't know. I think maybe if he confided in his parents, maybe they could have found a different way through this. But we'll see in the long run how it all plays out. Uh, circling back to uh, Sarah, she ended up, like I said, uh, talking to Audrey because there's no one else she could really talk to about. Because she's like, right, like, 
um, she has some like she's like yeah the most Jordan's going to have with his dad is some dis- it's like yeah him and his dad's going to definitely have a lot more disagreements when it comes up that Sam has been secretly training him because uh, Jordan wants to step up and be you know Superboy um, there's that element to it but it's like yeah but she's also like right the whole Jordan thing Jonathan thing too it's like that's all going he's got enough on his shoulder so she ended up talking to someone who would understand and the moment Audrey walked in it was like summer camp huh and it's like yeah. And it's like, yeah, sorry for ghosting. She's like, I get it. You had a boyfriend. She's like, yeah, but that was still pretty rude of me. And so Audrey's kind of going through the whole thing before because her parents got divorced. And Sarah's in a complicated space for herself because she's like, right, um, my mom is crying all the time. And she feels like and she wants to talk to her dad, but she's also still pissed at him. But it's also like, what can I do? Like, if I talk to him, I don't want to hurt my mom in the process. But Audrey kind of opens up about like, right. She, after her parents got divorced, like, she didn't talk to her dad for a year, but she's like, right, that didn't solve anything, it did fix my parents' marriage, in fact, it just made me sad and angry, to the point she's like, I got into fights and stuff, so, it's like, if you want to talk to your dad, talk to your dad, because this isn't about your mom's sake, this isn't about your mom, this is about your dad, because even Lana said, like, regardless of everything, your dad is always going to be in your lives, it's kind of a whole point she made last episode, so... Figuring out that way forward, you do what you need to do in the long run. And so she goes to see her dad at the end of it all um, and say, can we talk? So because I think that's what she needs, you know. So other than uh, it's going to be interesting because like finding a way forward as a family, even if it's separately, you know, just Kyle separated from mom. Lana, it's still going to be something they have to figure you know, out going forward. I mean, both families, both the Cushing family as well as um, the the Kent family having to figure out their way forward from their complications. Um, other than that, uh, Lana's having to deal with Dean, uh, who's putting up about, like, oh, he's all about family values and stuff like that. I'm like, once again, are we just sweeping all the crap under the rug that he was connected with all the last, see, you know? But it's like, I'm, I'm sure a lot of that mainly fell on Kyle more so than anything because he ended up being kind of the scapegoat. Well, his entire family kind of ended up being that. But I love when Lana called him out because he was like, you know, having a meeting. It's like, oh, it's all about family. Like, you guys are like family. And Lana's like, yeah, but what about me? It's like, yeah, all that's going on, you're talking about like, oh, how can I be so trusting? So I guess I'll just have to prove it to you. But he's up here talking about family, right? Our family's supposed to be part of this big family. Why is it that he took this time to hurt us in a very, like, talk about us, put us down in a moment we're going through something very personal? Once again, we're also um, talking, like, let's not, she could also throw out the fact is, we're also talking about the guy who was also going to potentially use my daughter's attempted suicide attempt, the game boy. It's like, yeah. Does this man really represent all the values? Like, I will prove to you on the debate floor how much like I know about this man. Because it's also like, right, no one cares about Smallville more than Lana does. This has been her home. She's been here every day. It's like, Dean, you're here in this position. Like, oh, you you know, you you know the politician way of smiling. Like, oh, we go way back. We sing in chorus. Oh, she she uh, drowns out my uh, blah, 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 blah. I've gone to school with so-and-so since we're... Blah, 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 blah. Because he knows how to smile, wink and nod, and pull on the heartstrings of the connections. But Lois, I mean, not Lois, uh, Lana has been the heart of Smallville. She's been this guiding light, kind of like, you know, kind of continue to be that. Where, like, Martha kind of was that for a long time, and now Lana's kind of filling that void a bit. I'm even to the point, she's the one that gave Lois the uh, advice you know, like I brought up earlier, so it, it's very befitting, because at the end of the day, despite whatever her circumstances are, I'm like, oh, you might have had Kyle might have cheated on him, but it doesn't matter, because at the end of the day, you are a good mother, don't ever let anyone question that, you know, ever let anyone question the good person that you are, so I thought that was kind of a beautiful element to it, so a lot to keep in mind as we go forward, I'm very, very interested to uh, catch, uh, see where all this ends up uh, taking us going forward into the next episode. I'm also curious because we haven't, we haven't checked back in in a while. Obviously, we got like a little bit of an update last episode, but I am curious about the whole uh, Natalie and um, John situation. John Henry Irons, like, what's going to happen on that front? Um, is his has his condition gotten any better? Uh, uh, how that's all going to play out. Uh, hopefully we get some updates on that soon, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see where it all takes us. 
uh, now that once again Allie has both pendants now um, or has what she needs we'll see how that changes the world as she says but um, really that's all I'm going to talk about to the next time we meet be happy be safe live life to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye